Many people associate the idea of a burner phone with illegal activity. That association was probably fueled by popular TV shows, such as Breaking Bad, where Walter White carried one phone for normal use and a burner phone for his meth cooking business. But what is a burner credit card, and more importantly, why do you need one? I am Dr. John Padfield, I'm a business professor, and this is Business Reform, where I discuss issues at the intersection of business, technology, and society. Every time you use your credit card, either in person or online, you are giving a lot of sensitive information to multiple parties. First, you are sharing your credit card number with a company that may keep that information and store it with or without your consent. That information is then vulnerable to being stolen in a data breach, and I have done numerous videos on the hundreds of millions of people who have had their personal information, including credit card numbers, stolen via corporate data breaches. But in addition to giving your credit card information to the seller, you are also giving information to your credit card company about what you are buying and who you are buying from. That may not seem like a big deal because a lot of people trust their bank or their credit card company, but should they? Because banks and credit card companies have visibility to everything you buy online and most of what you buy in person, they are some of the biggest players when it comes to the world of surveillance capitalism. If you're not familiar with the term surveillance capitalism, that is likely because it's a term that has only been in use for about five or six years. According to Wikipedia, surveillance capitalism is a concept in political economics which denotes the widespread collection and commodification of personal data by corporations. This phenomenon is distinct from government surveillance, although the two can be mutually reinforming. That definition is fine for a high-level overview of the concept, but if you would like more information on surveillance capitalism, Shoshana Zuboff did an interview with the Harvard Gazette in which she elaborates on how surveillance capitalism is undermining human autonomy and democracy. I have included a link to that interview in the description of this video. In a future video, I will do a book review of her book, The Age of Surveillance Capitalism, The Fight for a Human Future at the New Frontier of Power. But for now, let's just take a quick look at the evolution of how people buy things. To keep this video relatively short, I am not going all the way back to the days of pioneers trading chicken eggs for lamp oil or people making purchases with gold nuggets. Let's just go back 67 years to 1957, the year before Bank AmeriCard issued the first revolving credit card to 60,000 customers in the Fresno, California area. In the pre-credit card era, life was simple. Purchases were mainly made via cash or checks. A customer would give money to a store, and the store would give products to the customer. Few, if any, records were kept of who bought what. This system had several pros and cons. It required people to either write a check or to carry a large sum of cash to make a major purchase. Likewise, it required people to have the money to buy something rather than buying it on credit and making payments over time. This limited how much a person could spend, which in the long run was usually good for the consumer by limiting the amount of debt that they carried, but it was bad for businesses who wanted to sell customers more than they could afford at the time. In the early credit card era, a customer would pay for purchases with a credit card. The credit card company would then pay the store who would give the customer the products they were purchasing. The credit card company would then send a monthly bill to the customer that included interest charges for the outstanding balance on the amount of credit they had used that month. This is probably how most people view the way credit cards work today, but there has been a change to this transaction over the past several years. In the present credit card era, all the previous interactions between the customer, the store, and the credit card company are still true, but now banks and credit card companies are making additional money by selling information about their customers to data brokers. Banks and credit card companies selling customer data to data brokers is a relatively recent development brought about by surveillance capitalism. There has been some good reporting on the subject in several mainstream media outlets over the past few years. On May 12, 2020, Fast Company ran a story entitled, 
Credit card companies are tracking shoppers like never before. Inside the next phase of surveillance capitalism. The subheading for that story reads, In the battle between data brokers and privacy advocates, the latest front is the credit card. On September 21, 2023, CBS News ran a story about MasterCard selling cardholder data without their customers' knowledge. And just a few months ago, on April 3, 2024, the New York Post ran a story about Chase letting advertisers target bank customers based on spending history. But the trafficking of your bank and credit card information doesn't stop with data brokers and advertisers. It appears some banks just can't wait to hand over your data to federal law enforcement, even without law enforcement agencies having to go to the trouble to get a warrant or subpoena. FBI whistleblowers testified before a congressional committee that Bank of America gave the FBI a list of all their customers who use their Bank of America credit or debit cards between January 5th and January 7th, 2021, in the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia areas. Bank of America went even further by searching their customer transaction history and noting which of those customers had ever purchased a firearm using their Bank of America credit or debit cards. I understand if law enforcement shows up to a bank or a credit card company with a lawfully signed subpoena or warrant that companies have a legal obligation to comply. However, FBI whistleblowers testified that Bank of America did this without the FBI even having to follow the legal process. Earlier this year, Ars Technica ran a story about the National Security Agency finally admitting They had purchased personal data on Americans from data brokers, which detailed which websites and apps people use. Democrat Senator Ron Wyden from Oregon has been very vocal in trying to uphold the Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which protects Americans from unreasonable searches and seizures by requiring the government to obtain a warrant based upon probable cause and describing exactly what the government is looking for. Senator Wyden is trying to get intelligence agencies to, quote, stop buying personal data from Americans that has been obtained illegally by data brokers. If you or I were to knowingly purchase stolen goods, we would likely be prosecuted for doing so. But when the FBI, the NSA, or any of the other agencies in the intelligence community buys illegally obtained data from shady data brokers, That's just another day at the office. So what can you do to prevent your bank or credit card company from selling your purchase history to data brokers? This is where burner credit cards come in. When you shop online, don't give your real credit card number to a website where it could potentially be stolen in a data breach and where your bank or credit card company can collect data about who you are buying from and the types of items you are buying. Instead, use a burner credit card. This is not a paid promotion or even an endorsement of any particular company. In the near future, I will be doing a video comparing the security and features offered by several different websites and privacy apps. But for right now, I'm only mentioning two companies just for the sake of illustration. Burner credit cards work as a middleman between your bank or credit card company and the company you are doing business with. Privacy.com and MySudo are two apps that allow you to create burner credit cards. Regardless of what company you use, they all work the same way. You go online and do your shopping as normal, but when it comes time to pay for your purchase, you get the total amount due, then go to an app and create a one-time use credit card just for that purchase. It will typically cost you about 2.7 to 2.9% as a service fee, beyond the cost of what it is you're making a purchase for. So if you're wanting to make a $100 purchase from a website, your real credit card will be charged about $103, but they will only see that you made a purchase from MySudo or Privacy.com or whatever burner credit card company you are working with. The app will then give you a one-time use credit card number along with an expiration date and a security code So you can go back to the website that you were just on to make your purchase, put in that credit card number and the expiration date and security code and complete your purchase. That way, if that website is ever hacked and your information is stolen, 
Whoever steals it can't do anything with it. That credit card was only available for one-time use and it's already been used. Therefore, you are no longer at risk of your credit card information being stolen and used again. This also prevents your bank or credit card company from knowing what you purchased and who you purchased from so they cannot turn around and resell your information. Actually, I guess they could sell the fact that you purchased from MySudo or MyPrivacy.com uh, or whichever app you're using, but they wouldn't really know what you are purchasing. Companies like MySudo and Privacy.com have an entirely different business model. They make their money by protecting your privacy, not violating your privacy. Are burner credit cards a silver bullet that will protect you from all privacy threats? Of course not. But they are a tool that you can choose to use to combat surveillance capitalism by minimizing the amount of information shady data brokers are accumulating about you and selling to intelligence agencies and companies that want to target you. Have you ever used a burner credit card? Have you ever heard of surveillance capitalism before this video? Do you know of any other privacy tools or apps that people might be able to use to minimize the amount of information that data brokers collect on them? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and also please share this video with anyone you know that may be interested in this subject. And as always, thank you for watching.